I want to talk about conflicted cultures. These are coaches in boxing who train a certain fighter and they are massive fans of one of his rivals. There's a conflict of interest there, even if he isn't like a double agent, you know, working for the other fighter while he trains this guy. The fact that he's so enamored with the other fighter who's a rival of his own is problematic. It brings the wrong kind of energy into the camp, in my view. It sends the wrong message to the fight you're training if you're more enamored with the other guy than you are with him. So I'll give you some examples. Kevin Barry was once the trainer of Joseph Parker for many years, actually. And Kevin Barry back then, and even now, appears to be this massive Tyson Fury fan. Now we've seen what's happened to Joseph Parker over the past few years. He has become Tyson Fury's number one cheerleader. <laughs> That's all Joseph Parker functions as now, really, is like a sidekick to Tyson Fury. That, to me, is very disturbing, you know, from a fan perspective, to see a fighter who is actually a fan of somebody that's supposed to be his rival. Because then we know you're probably never going to fight him for one. And for two, if you did ever fight him, you've got no chance of beating him because you like him too much. So Kevin Barry is the first example. The second example would be Billy Nelson, who is the trainer of Martin Bacoli. Now, I've long had my reservations about Billy Nelson because I remember during the Michael Hunter fight when Martin Bacoli actually wanted to quit and Billy Nelson wouldn't allow him to quit. He almost forced him to fight on. Not physically, obviously, because Martin Bacoli is a much bigger man. But when Bacoli kept saying he wanted to quit, he wanted to quit. Billy Nelson kept urging him, no, you can't quit. You can't quit. You're not going to quit. And I found that very, very off because you don't know what the fighter is experiencing. You don't know if they've got head pains or there's some other kind of issue there. But Billy Nelson just insisted that Martin Bacoli continued. And obviously Martin Bacoli ended up getting stopped. And even if it wasn't like head pains or whatever, the fact that Martin Bacoli was so set on quitting in the fight, and Billy Nelson didn't want him to. Who's to say Martin Bacoli couldn't have got hurt? You know, seriously hurt, you know? So that didn't sit right with me when Billy Nelson did that. But in more recent times, Billy Nelson, like Kevin Barry, I don't want to say he's become a Fury fanboy, but he's teetering on the brink of being a Fury fanboy. Whenever he talks about Martin Bacoli fighting people, I know back in the days he talked about Martin Bacoli fighting Tyson Fury, but he doesn't anymore, at least not from the interviews I've seen over the past few years. Very rarely will he ever point Martin Bacoli in that direction of Tyson Fury. No, he'll always talk about Martin Bacoli fighting AJ, Martin Bacoli fighting Daniel Dubois, Martin Bacoli fighting Usyk. He's willing to fight this one and that one and he can beat all of them, but he never talks about, or very rarely, Martin Bacoli fighting or beating Tyson Fury. If I was close to Martin Bacoli, I'd be concerned about that. Your, your uh, trainer, excuse me, and manager is supposed to believe in you. They're supposed to be filling you with confidence that you can beat anyone in the world. But Billy Nelson, I think he has some type of connection with the Fury camp because I noticed when Martin Bacoli fought Carlos Takam, there was somebody with a Team Fury jacket on in Martin Bacoli's corner. I'm not sure if he was the cuts man or whatever. So there is some kind of uh, association there between Billy Nelson and Team Fury. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a bit too close for comfort. I think that Martin Bacoli's best interest would be served by somebody who is training him and, you know, guiding him and grooming him to take Tyson Fury's head off. You know, after Tyson Fury's performance against Francis Ngannou, Billy Nelson saying, yeah, Bacoli will fight Ngannou. He's supposed to be saying Bacoli will fight Tyson Fury. He's supposed to be saying we want the Fury fight now, but instead he's not doing that. Again, to me, that's very disturbing. The final example is Ben Davison. Now, Ben Davison doesn't really talk about Tyson Fury that much anymore, but once upon a time, he was not only Tyson Fury's trainer, but also his biggest fan. He was a Fury cheerleader. And now we hear that he is working with Anthony Joshua. Joshua's main trainer is still apparently Derek James. When AJ's in the UK, he's doing all this training with Ben Davison. And there was an interview with Eddie Hearn over the past couple of days where Hearn seemed to suggest that Ben Davison's actually been working behind the scenes with AJ for his past few fights. I don't know whether that was a slip of the tongue and he didn't mean to word it in that way. Maybe somebody who has access to Eddie Hearn can get some clarification on that. But if he has been working with AJ for a while, again, to me, that's a bit of a concern because I remember distinctly, I covered it, I made a video about it at the time, where Ben Davison said, this is while he was 
In fact, I don't, I'm not sure if it was while he was training Tyson Fury or a while after he split up from Fury. But he said that Tyson Fury does everything, literally everything, better than Anthony Joshua. Now, if you'd said that Tyson Fury is a better fighter than Anthony Joshua, no problem. But to say that he does everything better than Anthony Joshua, for one, it's completely untrue. There are certain things AJ does better than Tyson Fury. His lead left hook is better. He shortens his punches in combinations up close better, etc., etc. So to say there's nothing, it shows one, yeah, he's this massive Fury cheerleader, but two, he doesn't really believe in Anthony Joshua. And what you don't want is a trainer who doesn't truly believe in you. Trainers can, you know, hook up with you because of the money, obviously. Another training opportunity. We know Ben Davison's been everywhere. <laughs> training with all kinds of different fighters. But yeah, uh, if you really want a trainer to get the best out of you, he needs to believe in you. He can't, he can't just be there for the money. Even if he's teaching you things, the energy when you have a trainer like that, from a psychological perspective, is wrong. You need a trainer that really believes in you, really believes in your ability, and believes that you can beat anyone. If you're looking to make a title run, that is. If you don't have a guy like that in your corner, you're with the wrong guy as far as I'm concerned. You know, because when a trainer really believes in you, it gives you that confidence. And particularly a guy like AJ, he needs that type of confidence. So I think that despite what people say about the performances, the uh, Derek James is a better fit for AJ than uh, Ben Davison, for me at least. Yeah, Ben Davison might have a different way of doing things, teaching him different technique, so on and so forth. But from a psychological perspective, nah. <laughs> I don't think that's a good match at all. A guy who was literally a Fury fanboy for years probably still is in secret, right? He got chased out of the camp by John Fury, basically. So yeah, that's my take on it, people. Conflicted coaches. Where do their loyalties really lie? Is it with the fight of their training? Or is it with one of their rivals in the very same division? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And before I go, I want to give a shout out to all the new subscribers to my Patreon page. I cover loads of different topics in my weekly podcast, as you can see on screen right now from current events to deep dives down the rabbit hole and everything in between. I'm really enjoying the feedback and the discussions we've been having on there lately. So if you'd like to join the conversation, just click the link in the description box below. Are you sick and tired of the mainstream mindset? Does the dogmatic conformity and pathological ignorance have you tearing your hair out in frustration? Then don't be alone. Come and join our brotherhood on Patreon. We stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. You'll gain access to my weekly topical podcast where we take more deep dives than Jacques Cousteau on an endless variety of subjects. There's also videos, interviews, live Q&As, as well as a vast back catalog of previous episodes, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen via the Patreon app or download in high quality MP3. Connect with myself and hundreds of other members in our Element chat group. There's no contract, no commitment, you can cancel at any time, and it's cheaper than a Mickey D's McMuffin. Just head to my Patreon page via the link below this video and select the tier called the Brotherhood of Reason. I'll see you over there.